lot of people probably don't know this, but Chaz, you and Brandy grew up together in the same hometown, right? Like That's you've correct. Known each other uh, I've known yeah. Brandy since I was uh, sixth grade. Yeah, he, what he grew up with my uh, with my young brother, and um, who's a doctor, by the way, which is funny when you got your younger siblings. Is you know he's a he's a gastroenterologist, but anytime we come home. Like we're all all four. There's four, four kids in my family. It's, uh, two boys and two girls. Anytime we're, we're together, and somebody could have like an upset stomach, and, and somebody will Google something, and my brother say, "Well, you need to do this," and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let me Google it." And he's like, "Yeah, don't, don't listen to me." Yeah, I'm only a doctor. No, but, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, no, but Chaz, Chaz, and my brother grew up. They were in the same grade together. So oh, okay, um, he was a awesome athlete um growing up all through junior high and uh in high school he was actually um what would you play Chaz? you would um my true love was basketball yeah and uh, and brandy and i played a lot of actually we all played a lot of ball together uh, i'll tell yeah. you a funny story right so so you guys had they moved to eastern kentucky um i think i think robbie's first year was sixth grade so we went to yeah. cooper elementary uh, the year prior, um, I think we went, if I remember correctly, we won two games the whole season. Okay. So then, so then this kid comes from Indiana, right? And he was our, he's our secret weapon. <laughs> and we're excited. And I think that year we, we lost every game. And we actually got the sportsmanship trophy, which means you guys showed <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> we took your heart and we soul. Give you something. But, but you still played. <laughs> Yeah. And we would joke and we still joke about it. Me and Robbie, uh, Brandy's brother is like, Hey, pass it to Rob. He'll shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes. It's also funny too. Were you guys at Shaw together or did you just go through there at different times? No, I got there after, after he left. There was, see, that's um, also weird to me that like you were, you grew up together. You went, you both were at Shaw, but not together. Uh, you both came through 17. I mean, it's just like you, your paths have like crossed. One of my rotations, I was leaving. Uh, was that an RD? We crossed paths a one, one, one rotation. Um, I, I can't remember. I think we, we ran up to each other in Bagram as like the day I was leaving, the day before I was leaving. It was like the day you were getting there. I think you were with third bat or first bat, or you were doing a ranger rotation, I think. Yeah, that was, um, if I remember correctly, that was 2005. And we got, that was a third bat. We got called over early. I was augmenting. I was actually stationed at Fort Bragg. And we got yeah, called was, over a bit sure. early because of the, of, of Operation Red Wing, which you had talked about on a previous podcast here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to, do you just want to jump right into that now that we're talking about it? Um, so you, because Brand, I talked to you also, I talked to Brandon Temple, and I'm going to talk to him later. He roped in with Sergeant G um, on that mission. And, uh, but I'd love to hear now, since we're already talking about it, might as well just talk about it. Let me hear your, your portion of it. Like we know Brandy went a huge, that hellacious long walk, um, you know, the day long walk, just, um, just a nightmarish walk. Where, where'd you fit in? Like, what did you do? St can take me from like the minute you got the mission or whatever, wherever you fit in, wherever you started the mission and then till the, till the trail. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, I go back a little bit, just a little bit prior. Brandy touched sure. on it the last one you're on a previous podcast, right? They were about to rip out when this all happened. Right. And so I was augmenting out of four brag, uh, three third bat, three seven five. So when this all happened, I, I actually remember doing a uh, like a July 4th celebration there on Bragg. And the next day, I believe it was Sunday, get a call saying, hey, you got to get down to Benning like right away. Um, they, they expedited the launch to get over there so those guys could rip out. And so by the time I think we landed in country um, on around the July 5th, maybe. Uh, and then we literally hit that morning. We, we went in the got dropped off the mountains that night. Wow. Um, went Talk straight about a rude awakening. To... Brief, got the, you, know, you got your ammo, got the comm set gear, got all that stuff squared away, got the mission brief. And then um, I ran into who you with in, who were you with at Fort Bragg? Were you at the 14th or the was it the 22nd still? 
Uh, at that time, I was at the 14th. The previous okay. assignment, I was at the 22nd. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely yeah. talk on that. I, I want to cover that because there's a lot of cool guys that were in that unit. But, yeah, so go ahead. So I just wanted to so in the 14th. Yeah, so, so, um, over. so we get over, you know, the, the actual Latrell recovery already taken place. Uh, they'd already recovered two of the SEALs. Uh, there was one left. Uh, the last one recovered was Axelson, Ax. Yeah. And so we went out and basically high-fived. And I believe Brandy was at first bat or second bat that was there? Second bat. Second, second bat. So we so basically we high-fived them on a mountain. They got out. We got You know, they got on. We got out. Um, and then we spent three or four days just skirting that whole region. Yeah. Um, you know, 24 seven air support. And I'll tell you my career for me to be a part of it and to see, Hey, we're not leaving until we recover that last guy. Yeah. And to have 24, seven, a 10s and AC 130. That that's, that was it right there. I mean, that, that was the most patriotic I'd ever felt, you know, just, right. just, just the support there. And so yeah, yeah, I think yeah. after a few days, the locals, um, uh, realized, Hey, we're, we're not leaving until we find acts. We're mm-hmm. here for that. And we had, when we're out there, we crossed paths with, I believe it was still team 10. And yeah. I think that was a team that actually attached to. So a couple of the guys knew him personally. Um, we located uh, the remains, which, you know, obviously he had, he had been KIA. Right. Uh, and then uh, actually controlled the recovery. Myself and the platoon leader, we did some pre-assault fires. Because of the ingress for the helo concerns, you know, guys in high ground. So we did some pre-assault fires. Again, had obviously overhead air support to, to watch around. Uh, I controlled the uh, the helo, came in, recovered, and then at that point, uh, we just basically you know egressed to uh, out of the mountains. And I believe it was the next night that we exfiled. So that was the complete. That was the the last guy that was out there. Correct. You record. You so everybody else was in. There. Okay. Yeah, I want to say so, we're out there for maybe about a about a week. Jeez, that's crazy that you're out there that long. But I mean, unless you had a specific location where to look, which you probably didn't. I mean, Latrell probably didn't know exactly where everybody was, and who knows what local came across and like, you know, right. did whatever they were going to do to the body, and you know, so it was probably. I can imagine how tough it was to find that guy. It's just so crazy how <laughs> I just go back to it about how like you guys, you two dudes. Um, you know, have had similar situations to similar experiences, you know, and you from the same area. And anyway, I think that's cool. So you were the 14th, you augmented. And then, um, so let's go back. Let's go all the way back to the beginning, Chaz. Um, when you came in, uh, what was your first assignment? Like, where did you, you do first? Did you come in as a TACP or were you cross training? Uh, no, I came in as TACP. Okay. Uh, uh, funny story, kind of go back to the beginning of the career. So sure. I come in yeah. tech, tech school, uh, myself, Andy Cornelius. Um, there were two others I forget. We were on the airborne program, right? Supposed right. to go to airborne school right out of tech school. Okay. Um, me and Andy were known for having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we got in some trouble uh, in never tech heard, school. Never heard that about you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> never heard that about you. Yeah. You know, I tell you, it, it's little known fact. Like, yeah, little things happen, right? And and, and it, it alters the course of your career. Sure. And you know, you have to work to get back on track. But the first the, the one of the major things they did in tech school when we got in trouble and we were close to graduating, like the last couple of weeks, yeah. is they, they took us off the airborne program. And so we lost our assignments. I was going to be going to Fort W Fort Campbell was going to be my assignment. Yeah. Um no, 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 I'm sorry. That wasn't Fort Campbell. Once they took us off the airborne, I got an assignment to Campbell. And then again, fast forward just a little bit later, uh, right before graduation, I, I won't say the name of the instructor, but um, <laughs> we talked about for whatever reason, he didn't like me and I, I didn't like him. And literally, you know, you have cadre and a student. We, we, we got pulled apart. Yeah. And I remember him saying, I know somebody at the MPF. I'm going to F up your career. And I never put two and two together until a little bit. You later. thought he was just talking smack, you know, like yeah. he wasn't going to yeah, do it. Yeah, right. We all know somebody, right? You're a cool guy. <laughs> and so I got diverted last minute to Shaw, to the ASOC, as an airman, right? You want to talk about a kick in the jimmy? I mean, that's – Yeah. I showed up 
and I remember showing up at the unit the first day and I called uh, the superintendent and the, and the, uh, the, the, the NCYC, the TAC P shop. And he was like, who are you? What are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> and so anyway, that's where my career started at the, at the ASAR. And Brandy, and would, I, we never did co cover you, like your beginnings. Like you, would, like you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, but like, was Shaw your first assignment as well, or did you go somewhere before Shaw? I had a I had a, another uh, FSC, but the my dad jokes. I was on the freaking Air Force. Like, if there was a sport, I, I played it. Like, I was on the softball team, Air yeah. Force softball team. I, I was on the uh, all services flag football team. Carl Savani and I were, were stationed down in Panama together, in um, in between oh, okay. Chaz, or Chaz, Chaz and um, Carl. That's kind of how I found out about about tech fee. So I, I hated what I was doing, and um, yeah, to bleep. I, I noticed you, you were bleeping my last f bombs last. <laughs> yeah, time. you know, just whatever. It's no big deal. <laughs> talk, talk, speak freely. I can. It doesn't. It's not a big deal. I can handle it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I cross trained, and, and then, then yeah, Shaw, Shaw was my my first um, tech fee assignment, um, and I knew Chaz was there before. Um, I think we. Um, God, what was his name? He passed away it was stomach cancer. I think he was your boss that was, was there as well. Um, always wore a leather jacket. Oh, Steve Tadich. Tadich. Yeah, oh, Tadich. Yeah, Tadich. I, yeah, we were in Korea with Tad, Tadich. Yeah, Tadich was yeah, there. Good dude. Uh, Otis Rockmore was there. Um, yeah. Vince Fox was there. He's also passed away with, with cancer. Um, yeah. You know, there's some good dudes there. Um, it, it, uh, Wait, say that again. You cut out. The mission, uh, Vince. The self uh, Vince Fox Vince was there. Fox. Um, Vince Fox, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Vince Fox passed away uh, a few years ago with cancer as well. Um, yeah, he was a great guy, but it was too, uh, for sure. The, the assignment, the mission sucked, but you know, then again, it was in the '90s. That was that was before there was anything going on. It was mid '90s, right? Um, and like we do Kuwait rotations and, and stuff like that. But uh, um, the only good thing about Shaw was if, if you were motivated, you could go to all the schools that you wanted to go through. Like uh, I went to, you know, airborne, air assault, pathfinder, rappel master, you know, there's just a, a lot of stuff that, that I was able to knock oh, out. Oh, all from That's Shaw. Just, all from Shaw. Wow. Nice. And um, so speaking of schools, I'm not sure if, if Chaz wants to tell his story how he was able to get scuba school from Shaw. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, hey, would, you, you know, again, like um, again, it's all about that sheer will and determination, right? Yeah. You take that with opportunity, and you can get where you want to go. <laughs> um, but like you, Brandy, you said is um, I got to Shaw. Mission sucked, but it created opportunity. Um, and when I first got there, Tommy Ray was my first boss. Okay. Um, but I was, I actually went to, I got a, like a last second assignment. Somebody couldn't pass PT test or something. And I got an assignment. I got an assignment. I got to go to jump school. And then I paid, um, I went permissive TDY to go to air assault school. Nice. So to Campbell. And then uh, a bit later uh, went to scuba school. But now I, I'll say for that one, that wasn't the combat dive course. There is no way to backdoor that course or not least right. for me. I couldn't do it. I, I went to the uh, the school out of Panama City. Okay. So then, uh, Chaz, when you left Shaw, where'd you go after that? Korea. Okay. Oh, that's where we, you and I ran into each other. Now, I remember Correct. Korea. We had some good times there, Red Cloud. Um, <laughs> but I remember both of us had the same sentiment, like, man, we're at division. This is lame. I want to be in the fight, in the fight, wherever. It, it, this was like 95, you know, so there was really no fight going on, but... We wanted to be like, you know, a JTAC at the lower level doing the mission, you know, going out and doing stuff. So I think we were at uh, Red Cloud for, I think, about six months before we both were like, hey, we want to move to Camp Casey, which yeah. is closer to the border, um, you know, down at a, at least a battalion level, if not like a company type level. I don't think we ever were actually assigned to a company. But um, but yeah, so we did. Uh, so that was I, I just remember that you and I had we were just wanted to get the hell out of, out of Red Cloud. I mean, it was fun. Those guys were great. But. We were, you know, at that time we were super young and we had like these aspirations to do like better stuff. So, um, and then where'd you, so then where'd you go out of Korea? 
Well, <laughs> luck was <laughs> on my side. Let's just say that. Okay. I had a follow on to, uh, not that it was the best follow on, but it was the one I got, uh, was to Fort Knox. Okay. Okay. Now, when we were in Korea, they closed a brigade or whatever. They moved the brigade out of Fort Knox. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I got sent back to the ASOC. Wait, you, you back, went, back, back to the ASOC. Oh, dang it. Yes. So the good How thing is. How long did you stay up there? Go ahead. I'll just let you talk. Go ahead. I, I was there for, I think, under just under a year. I, I actually had to get a SECAF waiver um, to get to Fort Bragg. I got, I think I had four, three or four, was he Shaw, Korea, Shaw, four PCSs within a four year span. Jeez. So I had required a SECAF waiver, but I, once I got to the ASOC, um, you know, I, I don't know what uh, karma, what I made mad in life. Um, I was like, I, I can't, I can't stay. I mean, again, great people. Um, yeah. and, and it grew the, the dog shop there, the romad shop got much bigger, but it's like, I already, I already did a, a tour. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want my career to just be that. Right. And so, uh, had an opportunity to try out for the 22nd as a senior okay. airman. And, uh, and so, you know, fortunately that worked out and I went to brag and in, in, in a short, short span. Nice. Speak, I don't think many people, there's not a lot of people that remember, for whatever reason, don't remember the 22nd ASOF. Like that was like before the 17th, before STS's, TACP, you know, there was STS's before that. But as far as like all that, the 22nd ASOF was like that soft unit that um, is often, I, I think, overlooked by a lot of guys. I not Not intentionally by any means. I just think they forget that there was like a, you guys were there doing stuff. Um, maybe they don't, maybe that's just me, maybe my take on, uh, but I don't hear a lot of talk about it. You know, I hear people say a lot of 17 stuff, a lot of JCU stuff, stuff like that. So, um, when you got there, just give me a quick rundown of who was there at the time, like at the, at the 22nd. And not only that, give me like a rundown of who was there. And then like what you guys were doing, like, was it, you were all in the same unit where some people supporting third groups, some people supporting seventh group, you know, how did it break down? Yeah, that's it. When I got there, um, Tommy King, Mark Lutz were at used to sock level. And okay. then uh, myself, Eddie Morales, Kevin Davis, and um, Beeve, Rob Mathis were at third sure. battalion, sure. Or at yep. third group, brother. I, I was I was a line third battalion, third group. And then they had each other battalions. And then seventh group, you had uh, Steve Tomat, uh, six pack, yep. Uh, yep. Chris Griffin. Um, and then eventually other guys came in. Uh, Rick Weingartner and, and, and guys sort of rotating through there, you know, it, 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 what do we do uh, early on? Like uh, there was a mission called operation desert spring, which yeah. is a rotation over to the Kuwaiti border, some presence patrols type stuff. And some of those at soft thing that, uh, you know, just it, kind of a show of force along the border. Sure. Uh, that was pre nine 11. Uh, you know, did, uh, I did J sets over to like uh, Europe, Portugal things. So, uh, so we get very well integrated with the teams. Um, you know, you did overseas trips. You did uh, certainly trips all across, you know, TDYs and um, uh, rotations to NTC and JRTC. And yeah. I don't think you, ever, you never escape that. All right. Um, so then uh, how, at what point did you transition out of that? Yeah. Like, were, like was, did you stay there until the, I guess just give me a timeline of how long you were at the 22nd and, well, timing is everything, right? Sure. So um, I PCS there. I was there for like four years, PCS to Germany in 2000. Okay. Right. It, it was, it was actually just, just under a year, 9-11 happened. Right. And that evening, that day, I called back to Bragg in the team room and I said, Hey, I, I know you guys can't talk about what you're planning, but, but I want to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get on that first, that first two raw, but um, I actually didn't get in country. Uh, I augmented the soft, but it wasn't until the beginning of uh, early 2002. Okay. Right. But and if you just... remember, you got Steve, you got Steve Tomont, Tim Stamey, um, yeah. the, the movie 12 Strong, right? Where yeah. they go down to Monte Sharif. What, oh, you're they, talking about the movie that doesn't mention anything about, you know, you don't mention anything about Steve and, you know, he just kind of no. glosses over the fact there was an Air Force guy there just right. wrecking stuff. And Silver Star winner Tim Stamey out there pretty much doing you know, just wrecking the, you know, the Taliban. Um, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. So you came, so they, did you fly from Germany or did you like PCA PCS or 
they're just like, hey, just come TD, kind of like a TDY or deployment from Germany? Um, well, no, I, I, I augmented. So we actually, we came back, we actually did a train up. Okay. Um, so they got augmentees. Um, yeah, I, I had previously done a soft mission, but they, uh, they, they had augmentees from conventional previous soft guys came back because uh, the anticipation was this is going to go on some time. Sure. We're, we're short staffed, right? Just as the, the, the Ranger JTACs were. And so they got us through like, you know, combat lifesaver. We actually got to go to Safawik. Uh, uh, they had set up a really great training course. So we went over and did a couple of weeks of training. They said, Hey, bring your kit as if you're never, you're not going home from here. Okay. And so we brought our kit, um, ended up, we all went back to our, our, our assignments and within a matter of weeks, myself and, uh, uh, a couple other guys got a call like to, to leave pretty much right away. Nice. And I believe I see Schleich was on it. I know Schleich was on it previously, but there was a group of us that then we all got sent from our duty stations to, to Bagram. Okay. And then from there is basically like, we're waiting to catch a ride on the bus. I mean, it was like, okay, uh, you know, you're going here, you're going there. And we all got fished out all all over the country. Nice. Uh, So tell me about that. Tell me your experiences as, as an augmentee, as I assume that's your, that was like kind of like all of ours. Uh, our first combat rotations was ODF. Yes. So tell me about that. How was it going, you know, being at the 22nd, going, getting all that good training and then having to go to Germany, but then, ha- but then getting thrown back into it. Was it tough? Was it tough to come back into it? Or was it like, Oh yeah, I remember all this stuff. Cool. And just, you just hit the ground running. No, it, it wasn't. Uh, it was hit the ground running. Um, you know, again, setting on a Bagram. Uh, I went to Harat my first go around. Yep. And it was literally like, uh, hey, there's a plane coming in tonight, yeah, so you're, you're catching a flight. And I went up to K2 on an MC-130 with a bunch of bearded dudes <laughs> with, that walked around with black bars over their eyes. <laughs> right. right. So I cut an MC up to K2, and then from there, I uh, spent a day or two, and then I, I got into uh, got into Barat. Okay. And I'll never forget that that first getting in there. We, we did an ERO, right? So the C-130 landed, engines running, ramp drops. It's a quick. I'm getting off. There was some resupply stuff they were kicking out in Mel. Um, so here I am, 20, you know, like it was late 20s, and by myself. And then these bearded guys come on the plane and just look at me, right? Because they, they're already there. Yeah. They're like, hey, I guess you're our JTAC. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> who are you? What am I doing? Yeah, who are you? I guess you're a JTAC, right? So now we got to feed you. But uh, yeah. no, great, ex- great experience. Um, we did a lot of missions and they did a lot of split team ops. So half a team would go out with either the team sergeant or the team leader. Mm-hmm. I was the only JTAC. So I was on every mission. Right. Uh, not We did a lot of SR recon stuff and presence patrol and some other things. Um, not, not, not much for action. Yeah. There might've been uh, one instance where some shots were fired, but very, uh, very, very low key. It's so hit and miss sometimes when you're like, I mean, I, I kind of had a similar experience in all of my rotations. You know, you go out, you do, they get, you get the mission comes down, you go out on it, you roll a bunch of dudes up. You don't meet a whole lot of resistance. You, you know, you get maybe gather some intel, but yeah. And, and I, we kind of, Brandon, you and I kind of talked about it with Matt. It's kind of like right place, right time. You know, like if, if the, we have all these or, guys or doing wrong, all the wrong things, place, or wrong, or wrong place, wrong time. Right. Depending on how you look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it really is like, sometimes it's just, you know, you, you can do everything you, you possibly can to not get into a fight, but, you know, be available for the fight and it just doesn't occur sometimes. So yeah, I can, I, I feel you, man. I feel that. Is. So, uh, Brent, I want to get back to you. Cause you, you were at Shaw and then you went from Shaw to the, to Benning. Is that right? Or did you, yeah. yeah. So you, you had like the one assignment, um, and then you came over to us. And did you go? You were at battalion for a while, weren't you? You were at third bat for a yeah, little bit. Third bat. So from, I think I initially tried out in. Um, it took a little while to get there because uh, my ex was was still in the Air Force, and she had to get out. So I got picked up. I don't think like ninety nine or two thousand. Okay. It took me a little while to get there. Um, actually, the first time was it's was, was kind of funny, and I tell the story all the time. First time I tried out, I actually didn't get picked up. Because they didn't. Oh, really? Yeah. They, what happened? Well, they I mean, you don't have to tell me if it's whatever. They, no, 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 they no, were just they like, just didn't feel I had enough experience. And mm. so I always roll that into like, you know, eventually, you know, I get there. Um, you, you're already there, I believe. 
Um, yeah, I've been there since 97 at that point. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, so I, I was there w- with you guys before before there was a war. Mm-hmm. And then th- through the war, the war starting in as, um, and then was that, I was able to leave there or retire as, as a squadron suit. So, you know, every JTAC position in the, in the 17th, just like yourself, other than the, the squadron suit, you were op suit though. Um, you know, we, we was able to, to, to have, so I was yeah. doing JTAC. I was the company JTAC. I was the NCIC of, uh, of third bat. And then, I got to go to be RD, then you know, I was the uh especially the RD J tax, and then I was the op suit under Q, and then I was squadron suit. So yeah. every every possible job in the 17th I, I was I was able to have and and I was fortunate enough to be there for you know like like yourself. We were there for over 10 years. And yeah. uh, you know I spent the majority of my force career at, at Fort Benning. Right. And, uh, well hell I retired out of there and I tell everybody I was you know I left Kentucky when I was 19 years old. I've been living in, in the Fort Benning, that little area there for, you know, 25 years now. Yeah. That's, that was the longest I'd lived anywhere, you know, I mean, yeah. aside from like my hometown, but yeah, you were even at regiment, like in the very beginning of the, of the kickoff, you and Voight and uh, weren't you at that level? Didn't you guys, yeah. you guys were like the initial kind of headquarters yeah. element that went over. Yeah. So, yeah, first... so the, um, and then we'll get into that too. Cause I want you to talk about Rhino cause that's cause they just celebrated the 21st anniversary, but uh, yeah. So, um, we were actually out supporting um, jazz just left. He went back early. So it was me, um, Trent joy, John St- Stockman. Um, and was it Wojo was with us. We were out supporting um, fire weapon school. Oh, okay. Um, when September 11th happened. We were out there doing that. Oh. And I remember. Well, that's right. Cause it, it, it took like a, a long time to get back from there. It was because there, no, had, there were no flights. Yeah, we had that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> because they shut the airport down. Because remember those beepers we had? Yeah. Uh, that's not in the beeper area. Uh, and, and third bat was on RF1. So you're not supposed to leave more, you know, more than an hour away. <laughs> Where are you? Yeah. Nevada? <laughs> so the beepers go off. I remember calling back to third bat. They're like, um, I'm going to pretend I, I didn't hear where you're at. You guys better be here. <laughs> You, know, you got 48 hours to be here. I'm like, oh, shit. oh so, man. so me, Trent, and um, I think Trent's a lieutenant colonel now. So me, Trent, and John were in a vehicle, and we just nonstop like rotating shifts out. We drove from Vegas straight back to Fort Benning. Um, but it was, yeah. And then pr- probably we were what two weeks after September 11th, we were already in country. Two or three, yeah, something like that. Well, yeah, yeah because we had to be there. It had to be like two weeks because the third week, I think, is when. No, because it was like, I mean, it was like three. Yeah, it was. It was. A, it was quick for sure. Yeah, but yeah. we had to like to get all prepped up and everything. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot we were... about that. Yeah, we were all there. Well, I was. I remember just walking down the hallway, and the break room had that giant TV in it. I can't remember which, where the configuration at the time. There was that front office, I think, and um, yeah, we all saw it, but we're, nobody it didn't really dawn on anybody what it was like. You know, um, oh man, that's tragic or whatever. But it, it didn't. Nobody knew what the gravity of it at that time. Yeah. Um, was, so, yeah. So no, Chaz, so, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Brandy. No, no, no. I, I was saying that the um, the that, that kind of it, it not, it's not only changed, um, you know, in pretty much the world, but uh, our career field in general was. Oh, for sure changed at, at that that particular point because it, yep. it's uh um that's when i think the whole military understood the the, the importance of having the jtac and, when, and i still think even though one we were still considered etacs but uh right the the whole because i remember they just couldn't get enough of them and they realized that you can't just make them overnight and because i remember every team every oda oda team one and one um the, well, that's uh, like that, going back to Chaz's point. That's that's why where all those augmentees are coming in because of what you're saying, Brandy. Because there was like such a shortage, and then we're like, all right, just anybody, like not anybody, but you know what I mean. Like, you know, we need we need qualified dudes to come in. Yeah, I mean, it was, and and it, even within our own career field, you know, we realized. And I, I always I tell you, know, I think I said it on on the very first uh, episode where, 
you know, we were all talking about 17th. It's you, you it's, it's, a, it's a humbling experience, experience when you first come to the 17th because you think you're a good JTAC and then you meet guys like yourself and, you know, Q and those dudes that was in there and you realize jazz and jazz. You know, you realize, sure. Kenny you Lindsay, you know. You, Kenny Lindsay, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And yeah. so you realize that, you know, that you're way, kind of behind the power curve. So you got to, you know, there's a lot of training involved in their, all the initial missions for the war was all soft related. Mm-hmm. And even in, in, I think Chazel will agree, even, even that those quick little augmentee train ups, you know, didn't really go well. You know, like you could tell all the guys that were soft, you know, just needed soft prior, just needed a little dust off and hey, here's what they're doing now, you know, go out the door. But all yeah. the guys that wanted to be soft um, and go out on augmentees that's never been soft, like they were, they were way behind the power curve, way yeah. behind the power curve. And, I mean, Chess, and- you talk about cephalic. I think, I think all three of us were at that, that cephalic class they put on for us. And I'm not, I'm not going to say this to make fun of the dude, but to your point, Brandy, you know, we were all out there shooting and, but the, who was that? I don't, and I don't want to mention his name. I almost said who he was, but uh, they had that one guy that, d- that had a double AD, you know, he like, he like AD would his rifle <clears throat> or no, he did his pistol. And then he put it, he holds his pistol and grabbed his rifle and, and AD that one. I'm like, that was kind of a testament to the difference, you know, like, and w- right. kind of almost like we were talking about before. I don't know if you and I were talking about, it or I know definitely Mark and, and Maddie were, and I were talking about it, but, and it's, I don't know, I'm not blaming anyone, but when, when, before I got to the 17th, I, I didn't know as much about the weapon. I didn't know as much about shooting. I didn't know as much about any of that stuff. So it really is a testament to, and it, and it has nothing to do with the unit itself per se. It's just like, because like I said, there's guys at armor units that shoot great. There's guys that, you know, any other kind of unit, ASOC, wherever you are, it, it's, it's the time you put into that training, you know? And I think that um, at the 17th, you get a well-rounded training aspect, but um but yeah, it just you, like you were saying, you could just tell the difference between guys who weren't very comfortable with having weapons and the other guys that you know were. It was kind of second nature of that, you know. So, and Chaz, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say any details. This is gonna be like a little inside joke amongst us, but and whoever else was there. But don't let. I did not forget the uh, when he was handing out certificates when you went up to get yours. Uh, <laughs> I think I heard a helo in the background or something. I can't. I don't remember what it was. It was a smoke on a hill or something. Well, we can move. Like we can move on. Like yeah, sure yeah. It, might have, it might have been a tank on the hill. I You're thought right it was maybe. like a Kiowa, maybe, or like a little little bird or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I'll, I'll remember is, is when we were doing the quick draw competitions, everybody wanted to shoot JD. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? Get, like, leave me alone. Like, I was like, I'm going to go get the other one. Okay, I guess nobody else. Can I know, shoot. Ed, I wasn't wearing gloves either, and Ed shot me right in the hand, and I, it went into my skin. I can't remember which hand it was, but it, like one of those paint rounds went right into my under my skin. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think I shot him first. He'll probably say he shot first, but whatever. Yeah. Um, but Chaz, I want to talk to you. I want to talk about your because you were you're the twenty second. You did you went out with ODAs. You did a bunch of stuff like that. But then I also want to talk about more about your ranger rotations. Like, didn't you? You told me you augmented. Are you? Yeah, you, I guess you. I guess you call it augmenting. You you went on a couple of different ranger rotations, right? Right. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about how you know about the. Um, I think AMZ. I think this is in Iraq. I think were they, were they both in Iraq or was one in Afghanistan, one in Iraq? Uh, one. The first was Afghanistan, and then the that next was show, was 2005, was Afghanistan. Two thousand six was Iraq. Okay. Tell me about that. Uh, two thousand the second one, the Iraq one, because I know there was like. Something about AMZ was uh, that we were kind of closing in on him, and then that sparked some stuff that you for you what you guys are doing or something like that. Yeah, we, we were. Um, I guess can I just say where we're staged out of or no? Uh, you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, okay. it, it, yeah. so we're staged out of a base, and then none we of us working. remember where anyway. So it, it's just yeah. It doesn't and, and so we were working a town, uh, an area. Not that it's secret, but uh, Bakuba or Bakiba, however you want to pronounce it, and. Um, Notice that every time we went in, we were in contact. Yeah. And it was kind of a hornet's nest. It was an area that hadn't been really uh, hit much, hadn't been a whole lot of strikes or, uh, you know, or, or anybody going in there and, and taking out any of the, uh, the targets. And, um, and so what it did is it put AMZ on the radar. We, we didn't know this at the time. Yeah. That was all very sensitive. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, they got them. 
They uh, they sent a team into SSC, pulled off some some equipment, and it led to a whole lot of actionable intel, nice. and uh, kind of kind of held off on announcing this to be able to action some of these follow on targets. And so, sure. and and so we we were doing missions. Not that we weren't already, but every night, and then we would go hit a target, and then it would lead to follow on. Yeah. Um. And th- there was a few of those. Right. And I think you mentioned previously, right. You, you ideally you go out and you got your GRGs and you know where you're going and it's the AC one thirty. everybody's briefed up. And some of those, we hit a target and we get a follow on and they, they, you know, you're kind of going in blind, right. Sure. You got overhead assets, but you don't have that ground Intel that you, you to paint the picture. Yeah. You didn't have planning uh, time ahead of time to yeah get yourself yeah. ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And so I'll never forget one in particular. We go in and, and, uh, <laughs> so he's leading and I believe it's the PL that's got him. And then he says, hey, this guy's playing dumb, right? So we're already at the new new target. We're walking down an alleyway, and this guy walks us in an area, and then all of a sudden, he just plays dumb, all right? And so it wasn't sh- shortly after that call, fire. We start taking fire. Yeah. And so it comes to where we got squads on each side of the road. Uh, I got the uh, uh, the fire support guy south. I'm on the north side. And we're, we're both calling in fires on each side of the road. Okay. Um, it was, you know, it, it, it escalated quickly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that type of thing happened quite a bit after the AMC was taken out. And we weren't the only ones. There were several units at that location and, and from across other areas that were actioning targets for, for days. Sure. Sure. So when you guys were uh, on either side of the road, were you um, talk, talk to me about the like, deconfliction? Like, were you just, did you just agree, like, whatever's on my side, I have, and whatever's on your side, you take, and then just kind Correct. of go that way. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and in that way, and we all, Hey, we have all here worked with AC one thirties. Um, in, in that situation, I trust those guys to paint the picture, right? They've watched sure. us walk in. They've got some great, some good ground essay. Um, and, you know, we're confirming things, but yep. He had South, I got North and, and, uh, it worked, it worked out very well considering good. situation. Nice. Cool. So then, uh, so when you all, so you, is this, I'm trying to, Piece this together. So when you augmented the Rangers, where were you? Where were you stationed at that time? Uh, that was that time I was at Fort Bragg. Okay, at fourteen. Okay, so you had you went to the twenty second, went to Germany, augmented soft, and then you got then you went to the fourteenth after Germany. Correct. Okay, who was at the fourteenth? I always I always talk about the fourteenth. There, that's always traditionally been like a really great conventional unit. Like there's always been good leaders there. Soft guys come in and out. Um, it's always, you know, a bunch of hard chargers always, you know, um, is there anybody there that would, we would know who was, who, like, who were the guys? Were, um, uh, Ronnie Fleming. Okay. Uh, yeah. TJ Gunnell. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, Jurgi Jorgensen. Mm. Okay. And what's his he, first he name? He ended up crossing over and, and went, uh, went CCT at a few years. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yep. 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 Um, we had a few of those guys that d- during that period, uh, that okay. crossed over. Um, uh, Blackwell, sure, sure. He, he, yeah, Lee, yeah. I think he just retired or something, didn't he? I think he, he was he was running the um that course down at in Texas. I think he was in charge of that uh, the prep or the the training course for Tech Bees or whatever. Um, the last I knew, he was like touring in like a, a camper across Alaska or something, wasn't he? Oh, was he really nice? <laughs> right on. Good for him. Yeah. That seems so, like uh, one of the options for guys like us, you know, either. You know, one of them is always, there's always, you always hear Lee, about Lee, their buddies. Lee would be a good one to get on here. Um, he was with um, that kid, um, the younger kid that was killed. Lozano. Oh, Lozano. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, so when uh, I was working for a different company and we had some contracts to go overseas to teach some targeting software, I hired Lee to do a rotation. And um, I knew Lee back when he was, I think, an instructor or maybe at the 1440 went to instructor first time, but uh, great dude. Mm-hmm. And yeah, as I, as I was talking to him, um, I realized just how fit, like how that much um, affected him. Like he was yeah, still, he was still in a bad way. Um, so the company I was working with, we had uh, some contracts with uh, the owners owned a, a dog company and Auburn university were training the first PTSD dogs ever. Oh, okay. And, and so they wanted a, a candidate for get the first PTSD dog. And back then, Lee wasn't even, he didn't even tell VA about PTSD. But if you talk, if you know Lee, you talk to Lee, you know, he was, he was struggling. 
And um, yeah. mm-hmm. so I told the um, our owners of the company at the time, I'm like, I said, it's, you know, it's got to go to Lee. So Lee got the very first VA PTSD dog from Auburn University. Nice. Uh, he still has it now. It's a black lab name. And her, her name is Aubie. And, oh, okay. And, yeah. So he got to come in. They, they paired him up. And uh, it was just such a good fit. And I, I'm, I'm glad that he was able to do that. But Lee's got some really good stories about that whole situation when it, when it happened. And, and uh, you know, it just there's always a lot of funny combat stories and, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, Lee, to this day, Lee's still affected greatly yeah. about what happened understandably so yeah i mean yeah, it could but, be because it i mean wasn't he was essentially i mean they were like a team i mean essentially yeah. right i mean that was like the you know he was a he, I, mean, I assume he was, was the jtag yeah 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 and that, and that's a good point brandy because it just goes to show that any it can affect anybody because lee's like the traditional you know quintessential badass you know instructor you know just a just a solid dude but i mean it it's no one's no one is impervious to it, I guess, you know, yeah. and you just and I think that needs to be recognized. And probably back then he probably didn't mention it because there was a lot of stigma back then about, you know, mental yeah. health and PTSD and, oh, you know, well, they're going to take your guns away or you're going to, you know, you're never going to be able to carry again. Or so I could see the apprehension to even say anything about it, frankly, you know, so. Yeah. So was, I just went to Q's retirement. Um, and uh, so we got to, sit around and drink some beers and bullshit with him. And, and I, I haven't told him like, Hey man, I think Chaz went through some of the same shit stuff. I got, <laughs> I got uh, it. I got the tools, man. Cuss on. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it doesn't hit you right away. And I told Q, I said, you know, even though you've been out of it for a while, the direct combat, you know, cause you know, the, the, Q is the only person I know of that can stay in 30 years and retire with 16 years as a chief. Like this. <laughs> yeah, I know. He always was a fast burner, though, man. He like he I he I think we met each other as senior airmen, and he just went. It was like staff tech. It's just like I'm like, wait, you're the boss now? Where I just, I just yeah, got you. My, just got my here. Only, I, I think I said last episode. My only claim to fame is I put tech on a month before he did, and then <laughs> like a year later, he was a master. He was my boss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I told him I was like, you know, you this stuff doesn't start sinking in until you're tired a few years. And then, and it's, you know, so it, it, you really got to look out for, for one another. Cause it, it, like, it, it's no joke, dude, that, that it, it's, it, it hits dude pretty bad. Yeah. And I think the worst part of it is, like you said, you don't even know what's going on. Like you're just, you know, you're pissed off all the time or like, you know, so, you know, you can't handle certain things or whatever. And it's, and you're, and you're not thinking, oh, that's probably because I was in wars. It, you just, your body doesn't process it like that. You know, like you're, it'll just happen and you'll get upset or whatever. And you just accept it because that's the kind of guys we are, you know, we're just like, well, you know, I'm mad now or I'm upset now or whatever, but you fail to put the connection together. Like, yeah, it's probably because of all the stuff I've experienced or whatever. So yeah, Yeah. it's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you say, you say that I think part of it too is a lot of guys like to shoot. A lot of guys like to hunt and there's concern over, is there a stigma, right? Am I going to lose this right? Yeah, Depending for sure. Which direction politics goes, right? So I think a lot of guys just, hey, I'm going to grin and bear it. I'm going to make peace. I make peace with it, but I'm just going to, I'll get through it because I don't want to. I don't want to risk my rights. Sure, that's right. Yeah. yeah, good point. They may know. Yeah, this is I 100% know it's from this experience I had in combat, but I'll be damned if I'm going to say anything about it and get all my, you know, my rights taken away because people don't see it that way. They just see this crazy vet who's going to shoot up or whatever. But like, I don't. I can't even. I honestly can't even think of any times that that's happened. I mean, there, I think there have probably been some veterans that have done that, but not because of, not just because they went crazy. I mean, there's that dude at Fort hood, but he was, you know, he was a bad guy, you know? Um, and then, uh, yeah, but I, I can't think of it like a, a war, a combat veteran, you know, a usually upstanding guy who would just, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, but do you, have you guys ever well, heard of that happening or well, it's, it's kind of morphed into now. So Billy Otter does a lot with um, um, an organization called Save a Warrior. And, it, yeah. and it's kind of like wounded, wounded warriors. Like they get a bunch of vets together. So it, it's morphed into a bunch of guys that seen real combat and, and a lot of bad things. And they had to do a lot of bad things that were afraid to say anything. Now they're afraid to say stuff because uh, Billy says every, every meeting you get all these guys that didn't do anything, but want that hundred percent disability. 
Yeah. So they're, they, like, it, I remember when, um, before I even told the, you know, even identifying like, Hey, I've got, I've got problems. Jazz made me go. Um, Jazz yeah. was working for, for a company I was working for. We hired him and um, he just pulled me aside one day. He's like, dude, you, you need help. He's like, you need to go get some counseling. And, um, and the same thing, I didn't, I didn't want to, sure. um, but, but I, I, I needed to. So the, so when I was going through it, I, I met, there were some other vets that I knew that didn't do anything, you know, that were and not saying that they, their service was less than mine. I, sure, I'm, sure. I'm not saying it at all, but I know they didn't see any combat. Like I know right. for a fact they didn't see any combat. Yeah. Um, but they would call me up and like, Hey, uh, when you go talk to doctor, you need to say this um, and you need to say this and you, you know, all this other shit. And, and I'm like, like, like I'll, I'll go there and tell them what I saw. Like, I'm not, exactly. I'm not making up any, like it, it's, the, yeah. that's what you understand. And, and it's, so it, it's, it's transformed into the, the guys that's really done stuff now don't, don't want to be lumped into the group that's just out for the, the VA hundred percent. Yeah. And, and so they, they, so they're almost afraid to say anything because they don't want to be looked at as like, Oh, that dude's making shit. He's just trying to like live off the government or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah so we're, he, it's funny you mentioned that. We were talking about this at work uh, last week. And um, it, it's like, like during World War II and Vietnam and all, they had a term for guys that saw combat and then came back and had a, had a bad time, whether it be shell shock or I can't remember what they said in Vietnam. But there was a distinction between combat related PTSD, PTSD, and, you know, just having a bad time in basic or, and my supervisor, right. you know, molested me or whatever. And I think there should still be a distinction, but we kind of lump everybody, like you were saying, to your point, we lump everybody in as PTSD, which could be anything. It could be, you know, I'm in the military and I had a bad time in basic training. I didn't like to run. I never did that. I, I Every time I think about running, I, you know, have an episode or whatever. I'm not discounting that feeling. Like they could still have that feeling. I, I, I you know, I, I'm sorry they feel that way and they should get some help and they should be treated, you know, they should be treated for it. But I don't think they, like you were saying, shouldn't be lumped into every like guys that were on the dam or guys that went to Bakuba or guys that you know had a had their Terps face shot off right in front of them. You know, I think that's those should be different. Um, that should be a different designation, don't you guys think? I mean, am I? What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The um, so when I was talking about the the dam, um, the other episode, um, I talked about the the FO I had McLean when we got back in '03. Um, he went to the regiment. I'm not going. I'm not going to name names because mm -hmm. the, he probably regrets saying what he said. He, he said now, but uh, so McLean came up and was telling his and so I see at the time. Uh, that, you know, I, I'm having really problems. He's like, I think I've got shell shock, and there was no term for it back then. And right. you know, we were, you know, we, you know, we took 300 rounds of, of artillery in the first eight hours, just at my position. That's not Captain yeah. Thomas' position. That's just at my position with 300 artillery rounds shot at our little area. Jeez. And when when he came back, he was he he was like, you know, kind of fucked up and um and was trying to get help. And his boss is like, you know, you're just being a fucking pussy. So it, McLean ended up, ended up getting out, and uh, I just reconnected with him probably three months ago on Facebook. And I finally yeah. found him. Like I, I've been searching for him because I, I was worried about him, and, yeah. and and I was able to to you know get in touch with him and message him. And I'm like, you know, man. And I told him, I was like, you know, I, I've been worried about you for ten years now. Like I, I you know, ever since that happened, like because I didn't know what was going to happen when he got out. And yeah. and and, and uh, you know, he he told me he's like, dude, I had a really 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 bad time when I got out. He's like, I, there was back there was nothing there was no nothing for him to go back then. Nope. And, they didn't you know, know it was brand new, so nobody knew what to do about yeah. it. And like the only thing, only term he he could come up with is like, I think I got shell shock. And everybody's like, that you know, that's made up. What, what the hell is that? See, yeah. the thing about it, that the, the, the unfortunate thing about it is, and this is why I feel, is that there, it's not a it's not a hard and fast rule. It's not a, a one size fits all. I mean, McLean was in a hard charging unit, had a hard charging boss, had a hard charging peers. But not everybody can accept can handle the same input, can it say, handle the same stimulus, you know, they got to or stimuli. 
you know, for him, that was it. That was his breaking point. He couldn't, you know, other guys, yeah, they could take a lot more. And, it, but, but that's the key to it. It doesn't make anybody less or more of a person. It just means like, I got to deal with McLean in a certain way. Okay. His boss, I can give him a little more leeway. I can, you know, whatever, you know, so that I think it was people forget. It's like, it's not, you know, Oh, he's a veteran. Give him this treatment. It's like, no, that's, you got to find out everything and what's going on, how he feels, you know, his background, all this stuff, all these variables go into it. And I think people forget that, you know, they're, they, like I said, they just try to treat everybody the same and, and that's, and, but <sighs> They do do that, and that's how you get the guys like you're talking about that never saw any combat. And you know, they're like, well, everybody's got PTSD, so everybody's going to get yep. this stuff, you know. And everybody, so it's yep. just like it's kind of. I I think the VA has gotten a lot better now. I think um, they, for some reason, they <laughs> whatever they, whatever happened, it has become a little less bureau, bureaucratic. I think, um, and I think they're starting to look that way. But I, before it was just it just kind of got that steam that that it just kept rolling and rolling and that, you know, they change policy. They're like, before we're not giving anybody anything and now we're going to give everybody everything. And it's it, yeah. it just, I don't know. It's uh it's, it's hard. I mean, it's like I said, I mean, you have to treat each guy as an individual and sometimes they don't have the manpower for that. Sometimes like, gee, this is just too much. Or the guy's got to be on a waiting list for a month or two before he can even get seen because, because they are trying to treat him like an individual. I don't know. I think case by case is about the only way to go. But. Hey, hey yeah. Brandy, you, you, you touched on it and kind of relatable, right? There's always those, and not to go down this rabbit hole, but people want to work the system. Hey, say this, do that. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, I think, I know for my, for me personally, and I know this is the same with others, you almost get jaded by it. Like, you know what? I, I, I don't need that, right? Yeah. I, I don't I don't want that type of stigma. And, and I would put money that every one of us in this call here uh, you've taken things out of your records because you're you're airborne, and you know if you get deniffed, you're not jumping, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, I've ruptured each eardrum, one free fall, one scuba diving, and those aren't in my records. They right. were in there, I got seen for it, I got treated for it, but then I took it out. And I, you know, that's there's a difference, mm -hmm. right? You either yeah. want to do the job or you want to pad your records so when you get out, you can get something. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate that you know it had to be that way, and you're right. I mean, you hear and like we all work with pilots. They do the same stuff. They're like, I don't want any medicine. I don't want any, you know, I'll see, just let me, am I, am I going to die? Okay. No. Okay. Keep me on flight status, you know, or whatever. Yeah, you know? Yeah, and it's yeah. unfortunate um, even for us because I don't know. It just seems like there, there there's the wrong incentive. You know, it's like, just let it, like, I, I like the way now I, I want to say nowadays they get all those pays regardless. Like they're like, I think you, if you're a, if you're a JTAC, if you're jumping or if you have, if you have attained those qualifications, you just get the money. Like, I don't, I, I think that it might be the case, but I might be mistaken, but that's, I think that's yeah. the way it should be. I mean, obviously people can manipulate the system and, you know, kind of fudge jump records or whatever, but I don't know. I just, I, I think when you, when you put everything on a dude, when you make it so catastrophic to even get sick that the guy, like you said, lies about it later i mean i think that's the wrong way to go probably don't you think you probably, should, probably shouldn't have been that way yeah hey, you know, uh, not, not to ch change uh conversation here but i want to go back to something earlier um you know brandy and i cross and pass knowing each other for for a long time yeah um, i thought that was a cool but not real quick i just thought that was the funniest thing when you brandy got to the 17th and i i was like oh yeah i uh this buddy of mine i, I was just in korea with him or what, i was in korea with Chaz, and you're like Chaz, Chaz boca and um, you didn't go by Chaz then, so I think he, Randy, weren't you kind of, you were trying to put the pieces together like Chaz Bocook? Wait, I, I went to school with a guy named Charlie Bocook or something. Yeah, or, yeah. It went from like Charlie to Chaz. I want to say about senior year, right? So Brandy had already yeah. moved on and yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of stalking. No, for um, sure. Uh, he was. It was just. Uh, it was con like I thought that was so cool. Like that, how small of a world it is. And then Chaz, we were talking about the other day about. You guys are both on the trail rescue, and I don't know, it's just weird how it's how it's all kind of ties in. Well, and, and go I ahead. Was going Sorry, to I didn't mean to to school. School. I was going. To, I remember going to Seven Level School right at the time. Uh, I was I was at uh, the twenty second A saw. Okay. Right. I thought I was a cool guy, <laughs> and so I we went into like a guest instructor or kind of a uh, talking about the career field and such. And Brandy, remember you were in that class. Um, that was quite a few years ago but you were going through the tag p course at that time and then here I'm course, going, you were, oh you were at seven level and he was going through the it was like yeah you know, he was going through the course 
Yeah. And little, I mean, I never would have thought then because I was I was doing cool guy stuff. I thought, right? I didn't know <laughs> right. Randy was going to be doing all this stuff that they would make movies about. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? About. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell, dude? I, but the point of it is, I'm it doesn't matter if you're a cross trainee or a lifer. It's all about. It doesn't matter what you've done. It's about what you're doing and where you want to be, right? You can get sure. derailed and accept that as your fate, or you can keep working to, to a goal and get there, just not give up. Right. And, sure. uh, you know, I, I think for anybody out there listening that that wants to go do the Ranger thing or saw thing, it doesn't necessarily matter your your assignments. It matters what, you, what are your abilities? What's your, you know, what can you do given that opportunity? Yeah. Right. And keep working towards the goal. That's right. Man, when I first came in, uh, I was at DM and because we couldn't – we were really supposed to be in Panama, but according to the treaty, you can only have a certain amount of people down there. So um, we were all stationed at DM. We would just go TDY down there. Not the, the guys I had – like had got, like Eric Harris was there, um, uh, Keith Ingram, um, just guys like that that were like really good mentors. And that, so I thought that was it, man. I thought, man, I just want to I want to do what these guys have done. Ingram was at the uh, second bat and third bat. Or no, excuse me, first bat and second bat. And, um, you know, Jimmy Felton was there. He was an ex-Ranger guy. Uh, so I – and I was real motivated at that time. But then I got orders to Korea. And I was like – I couldn't – I tried to get out of it. I tried to do everything I could not to go to Korea because I thought it was going to be over. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to be cool. I'm not going to jump anymore. This is going to suck. And I ended up having to follow into Germany. And it all kind of worked out, like Jazz, to your point. Like, it's – it doesn't matter what happens – it only matters what you do after that has happened. You know what I mean? Like you, it's, you, it's all up to you how you want to react to that information or react to that experience. And anybody can, it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter what happened to you. You can still do whatever you want to do essentially. Yeah. So that's yeah, good. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I tell my son the same way, you know, every, every assignment is, is what you make it. it For sure. It can be a really good assignment or really bad. And, and um, Chaz, I tell you like, the ASOC is a shitty assignment, but <laughs> right. you know, I did. I, I got every every badge that I showed up at bidding was with, with was that from Shaw and Vince Fox is like, and he it, Vince God, he's such a great guy. I'm so mm -hmm. so sucks he passed away, but uh, it, awesome he was guy. never soft. He he was a he was a treadhead and, and he he was okay with it, but but if you were motivated. He, he let me do anything I wanted. He's like, I will help you. Just tell me where you want to go and I'm, I'll help you get, to get there. And, and, um, uh, Chaz was still at the uh, 22nd cause, um, you and, uh, Lutz came by one time while I was there. Lutz brought a big bag of donuts, which is kind of funny because <laughs> he was, out of, he was out of shape wearing his little, uh, silky oh. shorts. And I'm like, yeah, I got PT right now. But, um, uh, <laughs> Vince kept telling me, he's like, he's like, yeah, because I, I wanted to go to, I initially want to go to soft because all, all I knew was, was, uh, you know, Chaz was up there and what, what, what he was doing. He's like, he's like, I'm telling you, he's like, let me send you TDY um, with the Rangers. He's like, I think that's where you, you, he said, your mindset is, is more focused towards them. I say, he's like, I, I, he's like, I've seen both sides. He's like, you'll have, you, you'll, you'll fit in better at, at the Rangers. And so uh, I don't think you were up there, but uh we, I was TDY up to uh, Fort Drum and Sean O'Neill and um, but Jazz, a bunch of them were, were TDY up there. Oh, yeah, uh, I went to that. I was up there for that. I remember it was so cold. Wasn't Chief Reese? Chief Reese was there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Jazz did some combatives with, with Reese and, like, slamming him. <laughs> so, like, I'm there just kind of, like, standing in the background. I don't have the same kit you guys got, so I'm like, I'm like, I, like this is – like I was, I was sort of, I'll call myself sort of JTAC qualified because I was at the ASOC. I didn't really get to do it. Yeah. And um, so I'm up there and, you know, jazz would make everybody walk from OP to OP. Like there was no getting in the vehicle and driving to the next. So right. I'm like, this is, this is, I don't know if he's doing it for my benefit or what the hell was going on. No, was just, that was the way, that was the way he, we did it like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was, it wasn't hard and fast. Like it wasn't like every, cause I remember one time I went to, to uh, Navy dare, and we were all on, on that tower, like in our silky shorts and, you know, <laughs> no shirts. Right. And yeah. Kale Huffman was there with us. And I mean, it was, uh, so it wasn't always like that, but we, he trained for real. Like jazz was like, like I said, I mean, it was jazz and Kenny, you know, that, that team of leaders at that time was just, 
I, I learned so I, – I can't even tell you how much I learned from those two guys. And was Kenny, Lindsey – he was at the 22nd, wasn't he, I thought? Yeah. One time, one time? Jazz, Kenny, Tim. Jazz was there, right, Jazz? There used to be a plaque up there, all the original 22nd ASOP dudes. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and Jazz was Pete, still Pete there Klein. when I was there. Kenny had already moved, but Jazz okay. was, still, was still there. Pete Klein was at the 22nd, I want to say. Pete Klein. Um, uh, so, fun, fun fact, just I want to announce this to everybody. Pete's <laughs> middle name is Horton. I yeah, I knew that. Everybody needs to know that. All right. I was stationed with Pete in, uh, at DM. He was one of the, he was down there as a senior airman trying to like, and I feel so bad now. I didn't at the time for sure, but Pete was a senior airman. And then me and guys, this guy, my buddy of mine, Sundance Scardino and uh, Des, uh, Desa Vedra. You guys remember Desa Vedra? I don't, yes. we weren't at, he wasn't at DM with me. We were in tech school together. I don't know why. Desa was in Korea with us. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but Pete was kind of in charge of me and these other the airmen. We weren't all right. We were we did our job, but we were also very hard to control, you know. So I bl- no. he was just he was he had his hands full. But he was such a good guy. He was always like real level headed, very cool, very always like you know. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel horrible now for giving him such a hard time. But uh, yeah, he's just a great guy. One of the one of the best. You know. So you, you keep you do a good job of not talking about yourself on these. And uh, I even told you before we did this one. I'm telling you, man, like, I, I'm telling you, there's not a whole lot of stuff to tell. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I had, there was. We, yeah, but you were, whether you, you think it's insignificant or not, you, you were on the first airborne, you were on the first combat jump since Panama um, yeah. with the Rangers. Um, so, you know, talk about that. Because I, I got to see, I was still at the regiment at the time. So I got to help you guys pack your bags and walk into the damn planes and stuff and give you a high five as you go on the plane and i'm like I sit in the freaking... <laughs> there they go yeah uh yeah i mean it was uh like i said at the time it was very um nerve-wracking like it was like this is it we're doing you know the towers just came down so we're all like super pissed you know we're like we're still that rage is still there that we felt from being attacked and we were ready to get after it and just you know you should have seen these rangers man they were just like this steely the most steely-eyed guys i've ever seen um, and then, uh, I think it was, was it a, I can't remember if it was f- uh, full ACO and some Seco or vice versa. I can't remember if it, it was like a, a company plus. It was a jump fest cause the, the regimental talk was the, on it. <laughs> yeah, and, that's uh, right. Battalion, was, third battalion, I think talk was there and yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, 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 it was a company jump <laughs> and then yeah. you guys said you had talks from, from two different companies. You had the battalion talk and the regimental talk all jumped right, in. Right. The health, yeah. The, the, the regimental chaplain jumped in. <laughs> hey, he probably, he probably helped. I mean, we needed that those blessings. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was but like. It, go ahead. No, no, no. It, it was just what stood out for me is is, is one. It was, you know, you guys were taking um, NYPD stuff in your bags and and um, yeah. And, um, was it Tommy Frank? Depart- FDNY and yeah, Fire Department, New York. Yeah, was it uh, Tommy Franks that came and gave the speech before we got on the birds? Who, who was I the don't general? Remember? I don't know if it was Franks. I can't remember who it was at the time. I know but Votel. They, was, wasn't Votel the regimental commander at that time? Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. But the uh, I just remember the gathering everybody, and this four star stands up, and right before you get on the birds. You know, he's like, Rangers, lead the way. And then he walks off. Like, you could have, like, took over a country after that. Like, we were yeah, so – man. Like, I'm telling you, we were ready to just – we were ready to wreak havoc on people, man. I mean, you think – I mean, you turn a unit loose like that, and it's over. But the, the – here, and this is why I don't like talking about it. And, I, yes, for what it was, for what it was supposed to be, for what it was touted to be, um, it was awesome. You know, we – they they attacked us. We – hit them back like within weeks of, of the towers coming down. But I mean, honestly, I, when we got on the objective, like when I was, in, when I jumped out of the airplane and was under canopy, I think I saw tracer fire. It seemed like there was tracer fire, but that could have been incoming from somewhere. Cause I know there was about 20 dudes on the objective and the gunship killed like 19 of them or something like that. There was like one guy left Aco jumped in down to the other end where they're with, away from the buildings. And then we just did like, you know, what we do on airfields, you know, we secured it, checked it. And we just, you know, we'd, we'd branch out and check out little areas of, you know, unknown, you know, bunkers or whatever they were. 
ditches more like. But I know Seco jumped into the compound and there was this, this poor guy that was just standing there yeah. by himself with an AK and like, was it Bunch? I want to say it was Bunch. Uh, him and his whole squad just just mowed this guy down. I mean, he was, his man dress was just beat red. You know, there was nothing left. And but he was the only guy, the only resistance on the on the ground. But like I said, I mean, it up until that point, as soon as we as soon as we hit the ground and we established, you know, our security and all that stuff, I was like, we're just kind of it was crickets. It was like almost like crickets chirping. Like this is it. That's that's it. That's all that happened. There were a couple of trucks that came in um, that we took out with the gunship, but I mean, I, I honestly couldn't tell you if they were bad guys or not. You know, I mean, I know the way the way we look at it, the way Ranger looks at it. If we take down an airfield, or this is the way it was at the time. This is the way I assumed it was. Um, nobody comes in there. You know, like if it, you don't, I don't care what who it is, or it could have been some unfortunate soul that was driving into that area for some reason, but. Um, yeah, nobody was coming in there. We hit there's about two or three trucks, I think, that tried to come into the perimeter and they were taken out by the gunship like way before they got in there. And then um we collapsed just like we always did. Uh got on the birds, and then um as I was getting on the bird, I overheard I was up on the on the um you know, I had assets on station and I was up on the um the the strike freak and all that, and I heard somebody say, Hey, you guys are gonna like this, but we just saw a triple A piece on that mountaintop to the north, and I was like and this is as we're getting on the Exfil bird, right? So like, there's like, I'm like, what? And then the ramp comes up, and I'm like, run, I've run over the crew chief or the loadmaster, whoever, and I yell in his ear. I'm like, there's a triple A piece over here, and he tells the pilots, and then I just had to sit down and like hope we didn't get shot down. I was, then I just sat down <laughs> with everybody else. I'm like, well, this this could be it, you know. <laughs> the, the initial jump in and that Exfil was like the scariest parts of the whole thing because you know the, the uncertainty of it all. But yeah, I mean, it was I. The reason I, I kind of scoff at it is because as soon as we got back to where we were, we weren't in Afghanistan. We were at an off, off-site location. We got back, went to the mess hall, and right there on CNN was the IR feed of all of our of our infill, of our jump going yeah. into, into there. You can still see it. You can Google it today. It's on, it's yeah. on the internet. Yeah, so I was like, I wonder if there's any propaganda purposes to this, or I wonder <laughs> if this is just a show of force or whatever. But yeah. then there's some other stuff going on in country that I think, um, you know, it was necessary for us to, to do that mission. Number one, it was like, hey, whatever you, you came and you did this to us. It took you all this time to plan it. It took you all this time to do it. We this is our reaction to it. We, we can go anywhere, anytime, do anything we want. And this is a proof of it. Um, so that was that aspect was a, a good piece of it. But, yeah, I was like and then after that, we didn't do a whole lot. And then rotated out and first back came in and did anaconda and i'm like i'm back home just like <laughs> come on i can i do some more stuff but i like i said i know how i know how it works and like i know bullets go both ways but you know how it is when you're like you're so you're so ready to do something especially in that situation like iraq iraq was like yeah we all we fought the same you know we all did the same thing but it was like Afghanistan. I, I was so fired up to do something because of what happened, you know, like that right, it was yeah. just, um, but yeah. So anyway, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good experience. I mean, I, I don't, I don't diminish it in a way to take away from what we did. Um, but I don't think it, I just wish it would have been a little more, but then again, like that's a shitty thing to say because it, I'm, I should be, I should feel blessed that, it was only that. And we got in there and just and had no resistance and we took it down and it was easy, but you know how it is, you know, how guys like us think, you know, I don't think anybody anticipated, Hey, it's going to go on for 20 years. Oh, uh, for sure not. You know, it's, it's like, Hey, this is what we train for. Right. So nine yeah. eleven happens. I, I'm calling the team room. Like, Hey, I, I know you're doing this. I want to go. Right. right. I was so upset. Like I, I just left there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the so timing thing, like you said, on, the timing thing. Yeah. You know, we did a spin up thing and stuff. And then, um, uh, I, I missed my my first son, my oldest son's birth. And it was like, hey, you don't have to go, right? I was like, no, hey, I'm in. Put me in, yeah. coach, right? <laughs> I, I'm mid-career. Like, this is what we trade. I, I want to get over there. Right. And, and same with you. Like, hey, they they with the towers and all the people, I, I want to be a part of this, right? I, yeah, I, wanna go I couldn't wait. And, yeah, absolutely. I really couldn't wait. I mean, as soon as we found out exactly what went down and what the cause of it was, I mean, I was like, I could. when they said, it was almost kind of like a relief, like, 
hey, we're, we're get, get your stuff together. We're going. I was like, yeah, yeah. I couldn't, man. It was, I'm sure the same way, Brandy, when you guys went over there too, like just to be in that theater, just to be in theater and being like, all right, we're doing something about it. You know, it yeah. felt like that's what, that's what I loved about it. I just, you know, so and, and it, you got to see how unexperienced, at least as, as operators, we were at the time having, because, mm. you know, we had assets and stuff, but um, when you get over and have them for real and, and, and you start doing everything for real, it's, it, it was a little different. And, and I always joke about uh, when I was at the 17th reunion, I was telling them about our fir first deployment. When we remember we had the, the B and C bag, the actual green duffel bags that made it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And like they just crack up now because you know all the tier one units had the they already had the body bags the great big you know and ISU yeah, yeah. And all stuff we had we built pallets of green green duffel bags yeah, yeah. that's what that's, that's what all of our crack I hated was. those bags this is the worst design ever like oh I need something on the very bottom of this bag dump yeah. it all out I gotta get you know and then you gotta put everything back in like this is the oh, stupidest so, thing why didn't we put a zipper on the side of this thing I mean it's so dumb. Yeah, I hated those bags. So stupid. I'm like, oh, that was so <laughs> retarded. But yeah, that was. That but was but it it served a purpose, which was I need to move these 300 people. I need them all to look the same. I need them all to have the same stuff. I need yeah, you know yeah. I need to get them from here to there and wreck. Shit. So give them all the same bag. Give them all, your ruck is going to look the same. That's what I loved about the, and you know and Chaz, I want to get back. I want to get your take on the SF Ranger thing because I always do because I asked Matt. Uh, Schleich, you know, um, cause he did both, but for Rangers, it was like, everybody's ruck had the same stuff in the same place. That way, if you, you know, you can just pick up anybody's ruck and, you know, you knew where everything was and back in the day it was, I don't know how they do it now, but, um, but I, I like that about it. You know? their, their, their kit, their, their rack yeah. and their LCEs back, back in the day that you, you could grab somebody and know where, where their tourniquet is, where their first right. aid kit is, where their ammo is. But yeah, you, you could. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of that, Chaz, uh, how was tell me, because I think both missions are great. Like, I think I, I've always been kind of envious of SF in a way, because just because I'd never done it. You know, I, I think it'd be cool to do the it's more of a um, it's less overt. I mean, yeah, we're all so, it's all soft. But, you know, Rangers are like, we're here now and there's no denying that we're here because we are everything's blowing up around you. Uh, but whereas SF is more like, yes, that's going to blow up, but there's also a, an aspect of it where you may not blow up for a while. You know, you may have to do a little work to, to, you know, get there or maybe not at all. I don't know. Can you, you want to speak to that? Like how is comparing like your 22nd ace off time and even coming from Germany and augmenting to your Ranger time? Like how can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah. It, and Hey, starting out you guys here and, and, and all the Ranger tag bees, man, it, Looking back in my career, and I, and, and I, I think I, I made the best of what I could. If I had one regret, it was that I didn't do the Ranger mission. And I don't think I fully understood what that was. Yeah. Now, I, I know from what I understand about it, is it, it evolved a bit since 9-11, right? Doing the very, doing, you're doing tier yeah. one. It was a tier one mission. There was so many targets. There weren't enough tier one guys to action those, right? So utmost respect to, to, to you guys, what you've done, and the guys who did it for you know for, as an assignment. Um, yeah, for me, you know, you talk about the difference, right? So, so doing the soft thing, when I first did that first Ranger deployment, like I'm, I'm like making sure everything's silenced and making sure nothing's shiny because I'm like, <laughs> we're going to be sneaky, yeah. right? And yeah, yeah. It was like, no, we're going to go fuck stuff up, right? Yeah. Everybody's going to know we're there, yeah. right? We're not sneaky about anything. So that first time on the ground was a, uh, aha, this is different. And, you know, you talk about your, your, your first deployments and you guys were Ranger Tech Bees. Hey, we're, it, it was a little bit different in combat than it was in training. For me, you know, ODAs, you don't have those assets. Right. And I won't say the name, the call signs of some of these assets, but I remember them calling me and I'm like, you're who and you're what? What, what type of platform? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know. And right. I know you guys talked about this on a previous show. Listen, there's, there's a big difference. I'm not saying your basic JTAC skills, but the application of all the other fire support assets and the ISR assets, it's a different world. Right. Uh, yeah. Because you have those stacks. And I tell you, for me, it was a steep learning curve in a real world environment. Yeah. Um, I, I was certainly humbled and checked at the gate really quick. 
Yeah. Right. I'm like, Ooh, but, then, I was, but then you're probably like, right. this is so cool. I got everything I need. I can go look you, this asset, go look on that Avenue of approach, this asset, go look over there. I need you to look, do squirter control. I need, you know, you know it's like, you did that really well. Um, Cause I, I I've heard nothing but good things from third bat when, when you were supporting them. Um, Cause I, I knowing, knowing our background stuff, when, when you were, when you were augmenting them, I'd go back to the, uh, you know, the soon sergeants and first sergeants that, that, that I knew. I'm like, Hey, how's he doing? They're like, they loved you. Like the, you did an absolutely great job. Um, so, you know, kudos to you. You, you, you definitely kicked ass there because they, 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 they remembered you. Well, yeah. it's, 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 it's good to hear. Um, like I said, I, I was excited one to have the opportunity to augment and two, uh, I quickly was like, damn, I should have done this as a younger guy. Right. I missed the boat. And I remember Andy Cornelius. Well, wait, so speaking of that, guys. what's that? What rank were you? You were you said you were a master when you did master, that, right? Master. Sergeant, I mean, yeah. that's that's crazy. I was Most like, of us the masters are like on our way out, I mean, you know. You know, the, the, obviously the battalion leader is one of the younger guys, but it, me and a two sergeant. And I think I was older than him. Like I'm this old oh, dude out sure. there. Yeah. And I'm just trying to fit in, like, hey, I'm just I'm, I'm, you're I'm like the seat. You have the most experience out of anybody on that team, and it's like, yeah, that's. I think I had, that's I the, had most, most, maybe the most experience, but it, but you know, it's not all directly relatable. Again, I, for sure. Listen, I, I had a lot to learn. I was like making sure that I wanted to pull my weight right. And as we're all in that situation, listen, my job is to keep you guys safe. We want to blow yeah. shit up, but I want to make sure that I do right by you. Yeah, that was my biggest concern. Right, I just don't want to you know. Dude, knowing, I mean, knowing how hard it is to just to hang with the Rangers, you that it's a testament to you and how well you frankly stayed in shape because as a I mean, like I said, as masters, we were all kind of and Matt Slight kind of did the same thing. He went down range as a senior tech or a master and did yeah, like he's a hundred some master. Yeah, when he got to the 17th, he was he was a master. Um because like that's what I said previously. I initially hired him at the 17th as a uh, RD guy. So I was going to mm-hmm. bring him in, in, into R and D, and he ended up getting promoted. So I told him, "I'm like, hey, I'm going to send you down range with uh, one of the battalions, so, so you can have the experience." So I said, "But you're you're not going to go to R and D, unfortunately." <laughs> I said, "Because you're you actually when I when, when you're I leave, take the squadron, yeah, yeah, you take squadron after I leave." So, uh, well, like I said, that's a testament to Chaz to you and Matt and how just hard charged you guys are by being able to step up as an an E seven and like. And, and it's an Air Force E7, not an, not an Army E7, where they have a tendency to get do attain that rank a little younger, you know, as a as an Air, unless you're Q, and then you make it in like ten years. <laughs> right. where, There's always know. the exception, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you're you know, nineteen year old E7. <laughs> yeah, was like Q and Q and Marty Klukas, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I think he made it quick too. Yeah, yeah. When I first came, when I first met any rank, there, yeah. There's a guy named Todd Armstrong who made. He was a fast burner too. He was. He used to be the regimental. You know, yeah. Todd. You know, Armstrong. Yeah. He made it pretty quick too. But yeah, not this kid. I took my time. I, you know, I want to make sure well, I, no, I knew all the stuff at that rank that. before I went to the next one. You know. Well, well if you remember, JD, because we, we talked about this, you know, 15, 20 years ago when we were both on the teams, R D teams. Um, we were both tech stars at the time. Neither one of us wanted to make master. I didn't want to go anywhere, dude. Jazz was leaving, and Q made it, and we knew whoever made it is gonna, you know, is going to leave the yeah. teams. Like we would purposely, like screw up on on the damn uh, on the uh, on the promotion test, and it's it, you. You would purposely that. screw up. I would just take it normally and screw up. That's you know <laughs> whatever. It, it all the ending was the same. <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to go anywhere, man. I was like, this is. That was like the perfect job. That was I, I was telling Maddie about this. I was kind of telling Mark too. That was the funnest time I ever had. I mean, it was just such a blast. And I was like, I don't want to screw oh, yeah. this up, man. Yeah. So we we'd have um, you know, JD and I, we, we like we literally nobody wanted to get promoted. And um <laughs> we missed it so many times that I, I, I honestly think I think um Fairchild thought we were um <laughs> is, uh, Q, 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 Q was being a good boss, and um, they put me in for a step because they just thought that that I couldn't make it. And I'm like, they didn't realize like <laughs> I didn't want to leave Team Two. Like I, I love Team I'm Two. I'm not dumb. Them. Yeah, and <laughs> um, so I remember um, I get a call. We were already on Christmas break. This is like a couple days before Christmas. My daughter, who was I don't know maybe 
seven, eight at the time, um, answers the phone. She kind of looks funny. And she's like, what? I'm like, she's like, I don't know. It's some captain for some general. I'm like, what? I'm like, Give me the phone. <laughs> so I grabbed the phone and um, it was, the, um, I think, Gerald North. It was the Ninth Air Force commander. And he's like, hey, I just want to wish all my senior COs a Merry Christmas. And I'm like, um, I'm like, well, I'm a tech sergeant. And he's like, nope. You got the wrong today. number. Yeah, that's the day you're a master sergeant. I'm like, and I, I remember, I, I thought I was doing it internally, but I guess I verbalized it. I'm like, that sucks. And then and, uh, <laughs> he's like, well, that took him back. He's like, yeah. He's like, well, that's that's not the reaction that I expected. I'm like, no, sir. I said, I said, I appreciate it. I said, I just, you know, I'm gonna have to leave the fun stuff now. He's like, well, we all got to leave at some point. I'm like, yeah. What's all I'm thinking, you know. I was probably the only person that got, got stepped for on it was pissed off that day. I'm like, this is bullshit. You know, I'm like, I was happy where I was. Just Yeah. <laughs> but I remember I tried to explain that to Harper when I, when I came back from, from, from leave. Because Harper and I went to, we went to Halo JM together. And I'm like, so I remember going back to, to, to the team room. Yes, Harper, Harper, Harper is, uh, he, used to, he used to lead team two. He's an army guy. Just a okay. solid guy. Just a great guy. He, he, we both were, we both worked for him as a, as there as this JTAC, so yeah, he's a good dude. Just give some context. He, he just retired this year from up at uh, um, um, but uh, I remember Harper just kind of you know, Harper being Harper, he's like, When did you get promoted? I'm like, Two days for Christmas, I'm like, it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, 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 Air Force can do that, like, can just promote you on the spot, like, apparently, and then <laughs> against yeah. your will. Yeah, and sure enough, that, that, that's when it started. That's when Fairchild and uh, Jazz moves on, and, the, and Fairchild's like, hey, I hate to do this, but you need to come up to be the op suit. I'm like, see, I freaking knew it. That's going to happen. It's a good thing to happen, though. I mean, that was a, that was a good move. I, they See, that's the thing. I was kind of talking to those guys. I was like, sometimes we need dudes to – we we think we're doing the right thing for us, but then we need other people to kind of step in and be like, you know what, it's, it's time for you to – we need you up here. You can do good things up here too. You know, like yeah. it's like we don't want yeah. to do it, but go and, ahead. And it was, kudos, it was, kudos to you, Brandy. I mean, that's you know, most people don't understand how hard it is to want to get a step promotion, and how few of those <laughs> yeah. that take place. It's just taking a dump right on it. You're choosing mission <laughs> over money, right? And, yeah, and that's, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. And what JD's saying there is, you know, I get it. You're there having fun and loving life, but the impact you have now as a leader to those other guys, right? It keeps that going more than just you having fun. Now you, you can help lead others career. So yeah. One yeah. kudos to you one for being, getting a step Two, right? The impact you have is far beyond just, just Brandy. It's almost like the perfect way to get it because it you, you like, they forced you to be promoted, which is a testament to you and your work ethic and just the kind of person you were. They're like, look, this, he's great. He, for some reason, he won't get promoted. He's going to be promoted now. We, we need him up here. You know? Yeah, because yeah, you and I were like finishing our bachelor's degrees at, at the same time. And they're like, oh, yeah. Well, these are some pretty smart dudes. Like, why are they not? You know, the whole time we're like, I, I ain't doing it. Like, uh -uh, uh -uh. Like, uh -uh. No way, dude. I'm staying put. Like, unless they change the this billet to, to E7, I'm staying in E6. Well, we did we tried, we talked about that. We're like, I mean, yeah. if you looked at the teams at that time, those guys were all like the lowest guy was an E6. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I think I was like, we need to be that. That needs to be us. We need to have E7s on these teams. Uh, because they're not it it's it's just it's a it's a graduate level kind of an act, you know, kind of a assignment or whatever. You know, you need to yeah. be an experienced dude there. I can't have a new guy there. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was probably my, it, you know, I always, when I retired, I initially told everybody, you know, I've got no regrets um, retiring, but I, I do. It, it took me a few years to, to I, I was so pissed off and jaded that um, when I made senior that they were, they, their goal was to um, make me leave the 17th. And, um, yeah. and looking back, I, I, I wish I'd have, I wish I had left and gone to a different unit to try to instill some of that, you know, stuff. It would have been, that. yeah. I mean, it would have been helpful probably. It would have been, you would have touched, 
you would have been part of that knowledge that you had on the other guys. But you know what? Whatever, man. I mean, it's it is yeah. what it is. Well, the I won't name names, but the it wasn't sold to me. The 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 day the day that the results came out, I was called down from our group chief at the time. Um, same guy that brought donuts that time to ASOC. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm detecting some animosity. <laughs> yeah. Well, so he, he, here's what. He was told to me word for word. He's like, well, you can no longer hide out at the 17th. I'm like, I know that's, oh, I used to hate that man. Like hide out. No, but that, that was a regret I had is, is not going in uh, being a senior or a chief somewhere in, in to another tactical unit to, to yeah. start pushing guys back towards the 17th. Um, I mean, it's a good point. You guys, guys like Tommy case, who is, he's doing so much for the community as a chief out there right now. Um, mm-hmm. And of course there's, tons of other guys but tommy just comes to mind because he's like he's like he's getting ready to retire i think but he he like i said he's doing great stuff there's so many dudes that had did what you said you know and i kind of bailed a little bit too early as well but mine was for like personal reasons but right 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 so um i told everybody uh so if you look back i've got a picture of all of us together when we were all b flight um everybody is it the ranger memorial um that was one of them but everybody okay. that that was that was with with us there at the 17th at the time that that decided to stay in all, everybody from that same flight made chief but but that's the impact that the, the 17th had like you know it, kenny sean jazz boyd uh you may end up getting out q like everybody that was there in that building at the time uh lunk like you, you just yeah. think about it if, if, if they decided to stay in they made chief yeah. And did great things. I mean, uh, yeah, all went on to do good stuff. JD, I'd like to maybe throw out there and, and you and I talked about it a little bit briefly before is, you know, you, you, you guys retired and you're, you're still doing something military related, right. Or directly related um, in, in some capacities. Um, you know, I took a different track, right. So I retired. I, I well, actually, initially I was a contractor. I thought, well, I'm going to do a year because I've been gone so much. I want to be home, right? The, the mission's great. You're working with the same people. You're just, you know, right? Wearing civilian clothes, don't shave, you get paid more money. All right. So I, I did it for four years. And, um, you know, my change was, as I never forget my oldest, again, I missed his birth. We're very close, but, but you know, a bit, a bit later. Uh, so I was, I was actually in Afghanistan as a contractor and he had sent me his Christmas list. And on his list was for me to find a job in the States, right? In the U S yeah. and that, that hit me harder than anything. So yeah. I, I applied for jobs. I was in, I was actually at Bagram, um, loved what I was doing, but kind of passively looking like, Hey, is there something else I can do? And so I, I, I transitioned into the business world, same job I have now. I've been doing it for over six years. I'll be honest. I'm going to say, I hate it. it it's, it doesn't feel my soul, right? It doesn't scratch that edge in some ways, Yeah. but great company. They promoted me. They, they treat me really well. And, you know, for anyone that's having those doubts, right? What, maybe what you're doing now is never going to be what you did. Right. Um, it's hard to make a transition. I'm not saying I fully made a transition because I haven't, but you got to accept that and, and make peace with it in some ways, right? Depends on what are your priorities and mine are now, I want to be home a little bit more, sure. um, you know, travel some, but, uh, I know a lot having difficult making a transition, especially when you get totally unplugged from the military, which I am. Yeah. Um, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. That's a good point. I like, I just talked to Mark about that and you know, he had a similar job where it's not really military related per se. Um, and the get it's, I guess it is in some regard, but we're talking about resumes, you know, and Chaz, you probably ran in the same situation putting, military accomplishments on your resume for a non-military company is not going to do you any favors. It's not going to help you out. Um, you know, um, like he, Mark used the example of military free fall jump master. And the guy was like, yeah, we don't jump here. I don't know. What do you, what do you, what, what's this going to do for me? You know, he's like, oh yeah, it's a good point. He's yeah. like, so, you know, it's a good, it's something to think about if you are, if guys are kind of apprehensive about uh, getting out, um, or if they're, if they are definitely going to get out and they're looking for a job that has nothing to do with the military, that resume has got to look, it's got to, it has to mirror. And 
you guys probably know this. Everybody's probably like, no shit, we already knew it, dummy. But I'm just going to say it. You, it needs to mirror what the job you're going after. Like, it does, they don't give a shit about – they may care about your deployments. They may care about your, your medals, but not as much as they care about a master's degree in that field or, you know, right. like a, um, a bachelor's in, you know, a subsect of whatever you're going to be working on or whatever. Hold on a second. Yeah, Hold on. Wait, wait one second. Hold on one second. What's up? I love you. I love you. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> My four-year-old. <laughs> That's awesome. I think it's funny. You got a four-year-old. <laughs> That's bananas, dude. Let me tell you. That's yeah, good. I got a I got a six year old soon to be seven. Oh really? Oh, you're yeah. in the same boat then. Yeah. yeah. That's so awesome. I'm so glad that my kids are grown and you guys got small kids. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I forgot about it. I forgot what all that stuff was like. Anyway, yeah. go ahead, Chess. Well, give me a minute. Yeah, Brandy, quick, tell something because I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, uh, <laughs> was, was sorry. I threw you so, off. You know, transitioning sometimes guys will need to go do something else because like when I first, I, I did the contractor thing for a while too. And it's just, not, it's not the same. Yeah. You think it's the same, but it's not the same. You get treated differently. You get, uh, they, they don't really, they don't care what your background is and, and what you did. And, and so even now, like we've got contracts and um, what I'm learning now with, with that, uh, there's such a, a gap in, in experience. Uh, like when we did the Naval Special Warfare, this past summer, like their whole command on the West coast, they've got one guy that has had a live drop and he's a, he's a master chief that doesn't even, his name is JTAC anymore. Yeah. So, and you know, so they're like, like a live drop in training or in, at all in, in combat. In combat. In, in combat. Okay. okay. And, oh, so, Cause so, nobody. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so, you know, they hire mentors and stuff to come in there, but it's, it's, um, Sometimes even guys that want to stay in the military section have a hard time with those jobs because it's not the same. You're not treated the same. You're like, you, you, you think it's, you know, I'm going to stay something, keep doing something military. And it turns out to be worse for them because it's, it just, it just drives them nuts. And I've, I've yeah. seen guys get into dis disciplinary problems because, you know, like, you know, they, they want to be treated with the same respect that they had, at their prior I was position. an E eight, and I was in. I had twenty yeah. deployments, and I killed so many people. You know, and then people are like, "Yeah, nobody cares, dude." What are you making me yeah. money? No, yeah. then yeah, yeah they're like, "Yeah, that's great," but on this contract, you're you're doing this, right? Right. And so it's um, it, you know, so so sometimes it 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 is good for someone just to totally get, you know, start fresh and go do something else. And it's yeah. So you bring up Brandon Temple. He said he's going to be on here. So. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon was um, is his first. He's got one of the most unique careers I've ever heard. Oh my god, of. I mean, dude, just, just awesome career. So he was that was his first Ranger deployment. I didn't realize this until I was talking to him later because um, he just finished his PhD at Mississippi State. Correct. And, uh, he's he's a um, um, national security advisor for for a senator, and um, I just applied for, got accepted to a, to a PhD program as well, and I needed somebody nice. to, to um, as as recommendations. So I picked him and TJ, who are, who are kind of in that weird. TJ Gunnell's got another one's got a weird, you know, background. Yeah. He's a, he's a works up there, but uh, when I was talking to, to Temple, and um, he's like, yeah, he's like, he thanked me. He's like, you know, that was his. I ran into him in Red Wings, <clears throat> and. We did some mission before Red Wings, and that, I didn't realize that was his first um, Ranger deployment. As, as oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that either. And um, so the the SEALs kept trying to – the SEAL Team 6 kept trying to pull me away from Team 2. They're like, hey, we're going to go do this mission. We, we want you to be the JTAC. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Harper will, will kill every one of you. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so I kept – it's like, I, I you know, I bounced around like, hey, Temple's – he's a good dude. Like I, I listened to him control and he squared away. I'm like, he, I said, so they, they started, they grabbed him a few times. Eventually they, you know, they were grabbing him all the time to, to do yeah. stuff with him. And, he's so, so he's a solid dude. Yeah. Yeah. And if he had uh, any questions and stuff, I, you know, and I always, always try to help him out, but uh, I just knew, um, I didn't know at the time that was his first deployment until uh, we were talking when I was when You're I, like I throwing him in all these, all these missions. You're like, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, he's well, a... it, it wasn't until, um, here, like 
four months ago when I asked him to if he if he write me a recommendation letter for for my my program, and he's like, oh, dude, absolutely. And I said, man, I can't appreciate it. And then he's like, hey, I really appreciate you taking squaring away a uh, me and my very first ranger deployment. I'm like, dude, that was your first deployment. <laughs> Like I really threw him into the, you know, the freaking. You, yeah, he threw me, threw him in the fire, man. <laughs> like he's got it. <laughs> also, I'm saying, but you know, a lot of guys could have done it, but for he definitely could have handled it. I mean, he that, that was oh, yeah. the kind of guy yeah, he was. He is, is you know, he's just he's just that kind of hard charger. So, yeah, you, yeah. you read his you read his background on LinkedIn. Like he's done. <laughs> I didn't realize he was an officer in the Navy. The Navy, yeah, yeah. Like, he was a surface warfare officer. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And then he was uh, at JSOC as a something else, a uh, liaison. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck? And, and that yeah, I, I remember, and I really can't, this is why I can't wait to talk to him, because he's just, it's so, it's such an interesting background. But I remember talking to him, I think we were at JD, or excuse me, JT one time, and uh, Jaded Thunder, and um, he was talking about, and at that time I was like, everybody probably needs to stay in and do Ranger stuff all the time, and this is the way it ought to be, and blah. And he was the only guy that was like, yeah, I'm probably going to get out here pretty soon and go do something else. And, you know, I want to do it was it was just stuff that like nobody had mentioned before, you know, like yeah. getting his, you know, I think he he might have mentioned getting a doctor at that time. I'm not sure. But um, but I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, that's good. Good on you. You know, and that and that I can't remember if it was before that or what, but that was one another way that has solidified me to think. Out, kind of outside the box like if a guy right. wanted to go cct or wanted to try out for keg or wanted to go be a helicopter pilot or anything i was like go do it man do whatever you want to do we're gonna we will find another guy to fill your fill your shoes you know you're not no and that's it's that old adage like you know you're everyone's your everyone's replaceable like no nobody is you know no one person is going to make them let the machine break down so i always had that, that attitude like you know, you're not letting you, cause there's a lot of guys that were like, Oh, you're getting out. You're going to get out of the unit. Pff, you're letting us all down, man. Or they give them a hard time or they well, make I, you I feel was, guilty. I the same way. Like I, I couldn't see past my next deployment. Like yeah. my, my whole, my whole fuck freaking life was, you know, my next, like I didn't want to miss that next deployment. I, I, wanted, right, to be right. I, wanted, I wanted to be with, you know, with the platoon. Like I, I wanted to be on that next deployment and I, I yep. didn't, I, I didn't have the enough sense to see past that. I, right. I, I, I didn't see the big picture until I got out. And and then it's like, you know, I, I don't know. It is, you know, I'm glad guys like Chaz and, and new actually get into business, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for so, sure. You know, cause you know, you kind of, you know, you don't have that knuckle dragger, you know, like we're only good for, you know, You're right. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's more, hey, it's, it's more stressful though. I can imagine. Though, I'll bet it is. Even though, right. If, if, if you don't achieve X, Y objective, the, the risks aren't the same, but the job just because it's not one it does it, it's not what you really say you want to do. But it's there's more stress. Yeah, you, know, you get in your comfort zone. I say in the deployments, by no means are are easy. There's a high risk, but that's your comfort zone. That's what you know. Yeah, and switching sure. over, it is. It's it's different. Um, but I I think yeah, you Brandon, your point. It, that's 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 the most important for people to understand is you got you, at some point you got to accept that. When I when I had this job for three months. I remember my mom had called. I was on the road doing prospecting. And I was like, I hate it. I think I'm going to quit. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right? Again, luckily, I stuck it out. I mean, it, yeah. it worked out very well. But, it, it, and Jay, if I could real quick, a comment you made there a minute ago about the resume piece. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. if, if you read mine, as I'm sure anybody who's made the transition, you'd have, you, you might think I was some sort of, I don't know, HR person or, or business related in the military, because it's all about, you know, managing dollars and cents and project management and, and leadership and right. The, yep. the, the, the programs that you that you led, nothing to do with the deployment, no cool guy schools. That's not on there. Right. Um, and, and what really it helped me. It's irrelevant. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't, yeah, it, do is. Any it, doesn't it doesn't help at all. I did my first interview. I was I was on rotation as a contractor. I did my first interview with town acquisition. I applied for this job. I got my degree, not really relatable experience, but I got people. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I did my first interview. I was in Bagram. And so like, Hey, when you come home, you've been, you, you know, I got an email later. Hey, you've been selected for the next round. When you come back, we're going to do an interview. And uh, my, the person interviewed me was when soon to be my, my new boss. 
He's like, hey, I can teach anybody the car business because we lend money to car dealerships. He's like, I can't teach 20 years of leadership. Right. Right. Exactly. That's it. Right. So yeah. that's what people need to really hone on is leadership, your management experience. What have you done? Remove the pride, remove the deployments, the cool guy stuff. How yeah. does it relate to whatever field you're trying to get into? Yeah, exactly. Like you, you could like you have to you have to translate those experiences, those things you did into something that's going to be marketable to a civilian company. Right. Like, you right. you know, like um, you could talk about a deployment, but instead of talking about blowing stuff up, you talk about how you like you just said, like you led troops or you um, you advise the commander on how to best employ the, his assets. And then you're like, oh, well, that that I, that makes sense to me because I need you to come in here and do a project and you know, and, uh, and manipulate these assets to make money for us company. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to omit, uh, necessarily omit everything that you did. You just have to say it in a way that is going to make these guys say, Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Th or this guy is going to be a good fit in our company for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I led a culturally diverse and international workforce. <laughs> right. It's true. Yeah. It's that's true. right. That's right. It's all about wording for sure. Yes. All that, um, or was there anything, can you think of any other, like uh, during your deployments with the Rangers or with the, the ODAs or anything like that, that would, um, that were missing? I'll share one because, you know, Brandy's talking about, you, you know, dealing with things. And I think in some people there's, there's triggers or certain things that maybe lead to that, right. Or mm -hmm. that, that, that cause that cause anger that maybe later that, that, that you, you reflect on in some ways. Sure. Um, I won't go details of the mission, but we, you know, hit a target, squad pinned down, and we go da danger close. I'm controlling, and uh, ACs, and I, we're 40 meters. There is stuff going blowing over our heads, right? Right. It's Hollywood overplays it, but this is one of those scenes like you see on TV. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we go onto the target, there's a house full of women. They're fine. The men, everybody had been taken out. Uh, again. We didn't go there to actually make contact. We went there to grab someone. Sure. And they were almost like on the rooftops waiting. And and the, the hardest part for me is one, you saw a teenager, but hey, he was he was military age, right? Cross right. Mandalero's AK. He he had been taken out. But um, there was a there was a baby. Uh probably probably six months. Yeah that was on that target and you know had it been with the females the women would have been fine yeah. right but it's like hey if you guys would have chose a different course right we wouldn't have done this and and you know for me that's 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 the hardest part for me because at the time i my son was young yeah right and i remember the anger i felt in seeing that like one i was res partially responsible but two like hey why why would you put this person, this little thing in a situation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Man, that sucks. Yeah. And I, I thought I used to think the same thing, like, man, if you, you can get as mad as you want at me about it, but there's a reason why I'm here. There's a reason why we are knocking on your door. Um, had you not put in and, you know, they, they used to say something to the effect of, well, um, you know, we have women and children here. And I'm like, dude, you, you put these women and children here. Right. I didn't, I didn't put these guys here. Um, so yeah, to your point, that's had they, they made some erroneous choices, I guess you can call it. Um, so, and that's kind of how I get through it too, you know, like not to, not to say, and mine wasn't, you know, we all kind of all go through our own similar circumstances, but you know, you just have to kind of, it's not really a justification, but that's, that's how you reason through it. You know, you're like, well, look, I didn't, no, yeah, I volunteered to be in the military, but you know, we all have orders, and we're, we get, we had to go to this particular place, and you know, these guys kind of make their bed, so they got to lie in it, you know. But mm -hmm. it's unfortunate at any time a child gets any kind of child casualty over there. I just can't. I hate it so much. I hate it that we if if we did it, or but I hate it the most that they they have such little regard for life. Sometimes you know, they just seems right. like they're just so you know so callous and so aloof with all those guys, you know, all their, their family's lives or their, anyway. I haven't told anybody, but uh, I think my, my wife, maybe the, the counselor, but um, the, I had to shoot a kid. Um, he's probably 12 years old, had a gun shooting at us. Um, we were at, went around a corner and 
it's been the hardest thing I've had to deal with in my life. Um, oh my God. And um, when it happened, you know, it, you do it and then you realize what you just did, but he was also shooting at us. And then I immediately think of, you know, my kids are not that much different of an age. Yeah. And at the time, um, Harper just grabbed me by, by the back and just looked at me and said, don't think about it. We moved on, moved into the house and continued. He's like, you know, kept me from getting myself killed by freaking out and, and doing it. And so I didn't think about that for, for years. And it wasn't until later, I think, that, um, when it all, you know, I, when I started having personal problems, I think that's was, was the biggest, the, the biggest thing. And, and, um, when I was doing a, a reassessment for, when I finally, you know, said, Hey, I've, I've got a problem. And, and, um, cause I was, I was getting treatments for almost three years before I said anything to the VA. Yeah. And, um, and so when I went to get reassessed for the VA, they send you to, to a guy to talk to. And, and, you know, I was not really combative, but I was like, you know, I was told, I was like, listen, um, I know you see a lot of people that come in here that just are looking for, for the, the percentage or, or whatever. And um, so we start talking and stuff. And I, I said, I said, I'll be honest with you. I said, I think I'm screwed up in the head. I said, um, because I was asked to kill the kid. I wasn't asked to kill a kid, but I had to kill, I had to shoot a kid. So, yeah. Somebody and, had to. Uh, yeah. It was and, either you. Well, the thing about it, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't want to dumb it. I don't want to like diminish it in any way, but yeah, I mean, it, it really is him or you guys, you know, I mean, yeah. And, and we can, we can try to rationalize it away, you know, well, okay, maybe, it, yeah, you well, can't, you, well, but you can't. Like Harper did say the exact same thing or said the right thing. For yeah. sure. And so the, me expecting, you know, this dude to be like, oh, interesting, you know, take a note or something. And he's like, he's like, you're right. He's like, I do see a lot of people coming here trying to say what they need to say to, to get with that. He's like, but I do see some guys coming here with similar situations. He's like, he's like, I will tell you this. Um, he's like, I, I would be more worried about you if you didn't have a problem with having to do that. Right. He's like, because you have a problem, you're, you're, you've got good morals. Like you, you, you should have a problem with, with having right. to do something like that. Like that should bug you. If that doesn't bug you, then, then, then we've got more problems. Yeah. He's like, so, you know, that, that kind of makes you feel good. You, you see a lot of bad stuff and, and that's why I tell everybody, you know, it doesn't hit you till later. Cause you, you put that shit away. You know, mm -hmm. you, you think, you know, you try not to think about it and, and, you know, you see IDs, you see guys get hurt and, and you having to do, do stuff during, during deployments. And, the, um, but you put, you just follow that shit in the back of your head and eventually it, it comes up and yeah. uh, the guys that just can't handle it and it's, you know, so that's probably went way off left field. No, nope, not at all. And I want to say it's, it's commendable that both you guys and I, I consider it bravery. I consider it just as brave as having, you know, having to drop on, you know, a children or having to shoot a kid. It's just as brave to say it like this out loud, because that, that not only does it probably alleviates a little bit of um, uh, stress on you guys, a little bit of bad feeling. It, it relieves that kind of pressure on you guys, but also it kind of gives other people a pass to say it, you know, other guys have been harboring that those feelings of, you know, that they did something horrible um, and they don't want to tell anybody because they feel bad about it. You guys having the courage to say that kind of stuff gives those guys, it, it makes it okay for other people to do it. And I think that if more people would do this, I think it would be, I think there'd be a lot less issues. You know, I mean, we talk about, you know, guys, you know, 22 dudes a day um, and that kind of thing. I think there'd be less of that if, you know, if they could just hear guys like you say, look, it happens to all of us. We all kind of get, we all go through these uh, times that are stressful on us or they are, at, I mean, frankly, they're horrible. But um, if we can just talk about it and deal with it and accept it, you know, kind of like you guys did, I think, I think we'd be, I think a lot more people would, you know, not make that choice. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that, uh, you know. I, I totally agree. It's um, like, it's, it's kind of weird that I, I kind of wanted to bring that up during one of these things. And, 
And when when Chaz brought that up, I was, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm glad he brought that up. Um, I, I was texting him the other night that I was, and I was even told my brother, I'm like, hey, have you, have you checked in on Chaz lately? Because, you know, I, I kind of, I was, I was always, I always kind of worried, worried about him. And, and, and I was you know, just, just reminded him, I'm like, you know what? Um, he's probably one of my oldest friends, at least somebody I've known in, in my life. And we shared a lot of, a lot of similar, similar stuff. And it's, For sure. Uh, and it's, it's, it's good to have that, to share some of the similar situations and stuff. And it's, you know, cause we, you know, we know each other a long time and, and it's for him to have, to be able to, to bring that up. And, and uh, cause I know it's, it's shitty to see, dude. It's, uh, I know exactly what you went through. And I know exactly what you were thinking. Yeah. And, and it's, I, I, I mean, whether it be a rifle or a, an A10 yeah. or, a, or an AC-130, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. still a, a child that was put in a, a situation they didn't want to be in that they had no choice over. And, and you yeah. guys had to make that tough it's decision. Just, sucks. But, yeah. uh, but you know, I'm, I'm glad we're both here to, to, to speak about it and then talk about stupid shit too. Yeah, and you know, Brandy, one, yeah, you, you know, you said that one for me, right? Thanks for being vulnerable and, and saying that, right? You said very only a couple of people had heard that before. I didn't know, um, but if it helps anybody else out there, right, to hear the story, to hear some of the things, right, that that, that you're dealing with that others go through, um, just because they don't talk about it, right, doesn't mean they're not harboring something. Sure. Right. So it, it's key for everybody, you know, if if you're facing something, right, reach out. I think we're yeah. all very tight knit. Um, I know quite a few guys that struggle and hey, reach out, talk to somebody, reach out, get help, talk to a brother out there. And that's the key. Right. And I well, think like for me, yeah. being unplugged and disconnected, I find myself getting more just I'm becoming that grumpy old guy. <laughs> you're right. you, get, you, you just get angry and like. The, what I hate most, you hear, like when I go out to public and public's out there, right? I get angry. I don't want to deal with people. Um, yeah. And I think it's just it, it's just talking through it. JD, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. Hey, man. Um, you know, and, and, and to get out here and, and, and reconnect with you guys. And um, I, I think I needed that. And I th I'm sure there's plenty out there that do. Yeah. No, man. I, like you said, I can't I can't thank you guys enough for opening up. I mean, I think it's huge. And um, yeah. And like, um, I don't want to end it on a low note, but I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a low note because um, I think it has, um, like I said, it's, it's given maybe other people an opportunity to kind of say what they're going to say. I always say like, we, we keep these things in our mind and our mind is just an infinite span of expanse of like, you know, what ifs, you know, like, you know, and you, all you can do is think about it, but if you get it out and you say it, it almost seems like it's finite and it's almost controllable, you know, like, okay, I said it now. Now I can kind of deal with it. So, I mean, I think uh, it was nice that you, it was good that you guys could, you know, get that. For me, it's, out. it's, I want to do it. Um, you, you know, you're not going to be judged. Sure. In, in this type of setting. So it, it's, uh, oh, for sure. Yep. Good. All right, guys. Well, you know what? Like I said, I don't want to end on a, on a low note, but I don't think it is. Um, and I, I think this is a probably a good place as any to, to, to wrap it up um i can't thank you enough for for being on here this is so fun i mean getting you two together I, matt Schleich was supposed to be on but he, he had some other stuff going on but it's no big deal um we'll talk to him later but um it, it probably would have been the, the whole korean hour if, uh, <laughs> yeah it's almost kind of like better <laughs> still in the anchor incident That's anchor yeah god yeah. there's like so yeah. many <laughs> but that was that was the um when i first got to benny uh that's how it came up. You were stationed in, in Korea. He's like, he's like, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, it was me, Chaz, and and uh, so I heard Chaz, Chaz, whole time, and then then I heard Chaz Bocook. I'm like, is his first name Charlie? He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. it's like I grew up with him. And that was so weird. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. I'm like, like what? Yeah. Like, like he was like my my little brother's best friend. Like I, I yeah. know him. he spent you know days and days over at our house like he, he spent the night at our house all the time growing up like like yeah i've known each other it's like that's crazy that was crazy that was pretty crazy <laughs> couldn't believe how the small world it was yeah yeah, yeah. even smaller town of course you yeah. know billy ray cyrus is from there the judge are from there like all we these don't crazy talk about billy ray <laughs> 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 let's not derail the show brandy 
Well, <laughs> I'm gonna just put some achy breaky heart over the whole episode, so don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, um, yeah. Again, thanks again for coming on here. I'm sure we'll all be on here again sometime in the future. So, um, yeah, I appreciate it. Can't, can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, right. if you got Brandon on next, be sure to tell him I said hey. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Good dude. Good dude. All right, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thanks again. See you guys later.